Hi travelers, I am back with another open reading today and I'm coming to you with one a little bit early because I've got a lot of uh, writing that I have to get done. I'm putting together some new documents for myself and uh, working on the Casanova article. I'm going to try to wrap this up as soon as I can so that we can I can get out the questions to you and we can see who's going to be the winner of the deck. Um, but what I wanted to talk to you about before I get started, and let me um, be clear, the reading that I'm going to be doing after this has absolutely nothing to do with what I'm going to talk about. I'm not reading specifically on this particular subject. So I just wanted to make that clear before a lot of people start posting underneath the video. But I was just, I uh, was in here working on uh, a document and I just heard this announcement from Prince Harry. Now, I, I guess, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago I was talking about, you know, I heard the news. And so I just heard, and if anybody out there who lives in, uh, England or as part of the British Commonwealth who understands what's happening. I would appreciate if you would let me know if I'm correct or not. But I just heard this um, announcement. Prince Harry made the speech saying that, you know, he was sorry that, you know, things didn't go the way that he and Meghan wanted them to. Um, but if I'm not mistaken, the Queen just kind of stripped them both of their HRH titles. Now, I don't know if that's exactly true or not. But that's what I kind of think just happened in a roundabout way, um, in which case I would say keep an eye out on their Instagram account to see if that changes. I think their thing is at Sussex Royal, but I never made the connection of the abdication of King Edward. I, I did not see that. And so I just went back to look. Uh, I cast a chart for uh, the day that King Edward announced uh, he was abdicating the throne, which was December 11th, 1936. And the speech came around at 11 p.m. at night, 2100 hours. And interestingly enough, uh, and I'm just going to, I won't be able to see myself. I'm going to be looking at my chart here. But interestingly enough, we find some of the same planetary placements, not at the, at, at the same degrees, but we have some of the same planets and some of the same, um, positions. So on the day of the abdication speech, what we had sitting in on December 11th, 1936, we find Jupiter conjunct Ceres conjunct Mercury. Now Ceres is all about um, the division of things, of sharing of space, sharing of things. This is the idea that I don't know if, if uh, for those of you who've been hanging, you know, on the on the website on the website, I talked to you about how Ceres, her daughter, got kidnapped by Pluto, and she went around looking for for a daughter and couldn't find it. She searched high, she searched low, she talked to other gods and everything, and finally she went to Jupiter and she asked Jupiter, you know, can you help me? And Jupiter was like, oh, I ain't got time to be helping you with that crap. I'm the king of the, you know, the gods. I got other things to do. So Ceres, who was the queen of um, of um I want to say agriculture she was the goddess of agriculture she she you know she went on strike and everything froze and then humanity started to starve until finally Jupiter was like oh well damn I better help her out because you know <laughs> the people are revolting um humanity starving to death so I need to you know go find out exactly where she is and try to help strike this bargain well it turns out um, that he was able to strike a bargain, uh, not really necessarily strike a bargain, but he asked Ceres, once he located per, uh, Persephone or Prosepina, okay, once he located her, he found that his brother Pluto had kidnapped her, made her his bride. Um, but he asked her, there was a, a clause that Pluto knew about, it was kind of a trick. He asked, Jupiter asked Prosepina, when once he located her, well, did you eat of the seed? Uh, uh, did you eat of the pomegranate fruit? And she said, yes, I ate some of them. And so that kind of allowed them to strike this grand bargain where Proserpina would spend six months out of the year uh, in Hades with Pluto and then six months out of the year with her mother, Ceres, thereby um, freeing up humanity to, to once again um, not starve to death and whatnot, okay? What I find interesting, um, 
at the same time uh, in 1936 was we had Diana there. Now, it, for those of you who know the history, um, Wallace was, quote unquote, a single lady. She was a divorced woman, rather. I think she'd been twice divorced or one husband died and then she divorced the other one, something of that nature. But she never really quite um, fell into the role of what one would expect to be a goddess. She was quite independent. She did have lovers. Um, she was granted um, the gift of being able to roam free with her, just her dogs. And she was known as the goddess of the hunt. Um, where did I see? Over here underneath the chart as it stands now, uh, with the whole situation with Megan and Harry, I find Diana at two degrees Libra. Well, we know that Libra rules marriages, partnerships, open enemies, lawsuits, um, but also um, um, balance and fairness. Okay, so we have again this idea of this very independent kind of a female roaming around uh, in, in these charts. Um, there was something else I was looking at here. Underneath the chart for today, when I just heard this announcement, there's a huge stellium in the sign of Capricorn. We have Bacchus at four degrees, the South Node at seven, Jupiter at 11, Fortuna at 17, Pluto conjunct Saturn and Ceres, all in the sign of Capricorn. Now, you guys have heard me talk about um, what Capricorn represents. Capricorn represents your highest ideals, your station, your ambition, your goals in life. What is the highest thing that you want to reach for? So we have this huge, um, but it also rules big governments. So um, heads of state. So we're also looking at the queen and the monarchy itself. Um, and I think what what if I'm reading the signals right, we have this major shift that's going on, but I kind of think that maybe Megan and Harry overplayed their hand because they kind of wanted to have their cake and eat it too. We got all of this uh, Capricorn stuff happening here. The highest ideals, the highest of the high, the most visibly seen. Um, and I think they may have overplayed their hand and did not expect that the queen was like, okay, you guys want to go and cut your asses off, which is which is what she did. If this means that in effect, they've been stripped of their HRH titles, if it plays out like history, uh, when King Edward abdicated the throne for Wallace Simpson, they were stripped of their HRH titles, which meant that all of those other people, those groups of people that were associated with the monarchy, no longer received them. They were in fact kind of cut off and isolated. And I think that's what I was saying before. I just had this, this sense that there was going to be some kind of isolation. And then to discover that um, they had moved to this private island. I mean, well, you know, what's more isolated than an island? And so there's a lot of um, things playing out. I think what is most remarkable is this idea that both of these charts have Uranus sitting in the sign of Taurus. Today, Uranus is at two degrees uh, Taurus, which it has just come out of retrograde status. But back in 1936, it was sitting at six degrees Taurus, but it was retrograde, okay? Um, and Taurus and Uranus talks about influxes and can be about changes and influxes of your financial status. Well, the queen just cut them off. And um, this is a major change and a major shakeup, but it also speaks to the independence of trying to go out and do things on your own. I'm going to independently go out and because it rules your own personal finances. So I think I find this to be quite um, interesting um, that uh, there I see, I see Wallace and Simpson did not have kids right? But we could look at baby, I don't know if we want to look at baby um, Archie as Cupido um, or not, um, but maybe, maybe so. Interestingly, right now, uh, Mars and Cupido are together in the sign of Sagittarius. The moon is conjunct Mars. 
Um, I think more than anything, what stands out about these two charts and the, the somewhat similarities to them is the oppositions from the sign of Capricorn to Cancer. Now, today, the chart that I cast for today, I find Pluto at 23 degrees Capricorn. Okay, in 1936, Pluto was um, opposite the sign of Capricorn. It was at 28 degrees retrograde in the sign of Cancer. And so I'm not quite sure exactly what that means. I think it's significant. I'll have to spend more time looking at that. But the charts, in a sense, are, are, are rather eerie. Um, and I, like I said, I completely miss that connection. Um, I don't, I don't, it was right there in front of me the whole time, uh, but I just, uh, didn't catch on to it. So we shall see how this, um, how this plays out. I would, I would, again, I don't follow them. I don't have an Instagram account, but I would again, keep an eye on their Instagram account to see if maybe the name even changes. Um, that's an Aries first house thing. Um, and we do have Mars, uh, Mars is going to be entering into, I don't know exactly when he's going to be entering, entering into Aries, but it's, it's going to be a while, but this could be like a war of words or a battle of, um, what's in Aries right now. Now we have Vulcan in Aries. No, we don't. We have, um, Chiron in Aries along with Celestia, the wife of Neptune conjunct each other. Hmm. That's interesting in the ninth house. So this could end up being a battle of um, personas, uh, a, what do you call it? A um, public relations kind of a battle. It's going to be very interesting to see how this turns out. So just keep your eye on that. And again, if I am mistaken about the way this thing just went down, because I've been, I'm kind of confused by this, the statement that Harry made. I don't know what the queen says, what her pronouncement was, but I would take that to mean that there's a real possibility that if they're not going, she's saying, if you're not going to fulfill your duties as a royal, then you don't get to enjoy any of the, the perks that, that go along with that. And um, I don't know if that means that they've lost their HRH titles. So that's really, really quite interesting to me. And so, um, like I said, if I'm wrong, anybody who knows that, you know, come underneath the video and tell me. Um, but I'm going to tell you, it ain't over. So <laughs> with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and do an open reading. And I'm going to be uh, utilizing the Impressionist Tarot. And we'll also be using the... Um, The, what do you call it? The La Vida Sibilas. You know, I think it's time for me to open another deck of Sibilas and put these to rest. Um, usually when I buy the decks, I buy five or six decks at a time. Um, once the deck becomes pretty much too old for me to even handle anymore, I burn those decks. Uh, I try to transmute that energy that they gave me back into uh the universe, um, but I don't know. So let's, um, again, uh, this is a general reading. The messages will not resonate for everybody. It's not for a specific sign. It is not about Megan and Harry. So don't be um, emailing me with my questions about that. Um, we'll just see what the cards have to say. But I just thought I'd bring that to you because like I said, I completely, completely, completely uh, just come miss that. Well, I don't know if I missed it. I think that it was more of a wait and see attitude. So we shall see. So let me turn the camera around and then we'll get started. Okay. Yeah. Alrighty then. We're going to do nine cards down. God, my fingers are so stiff, you guys. I think I got a touch of arthritis in them. Oh, you know that Capricorn, it rules the bones.
and the skeletal system, and I have it on the 12th house. So I have a huge stellium going on in my 12th house right about now. It is what it is. Knight of Swords. I don't know if you guys can see this or not, and I might have too much light, but hopefully you can see it. The Hermit card. Hmm, interesting. The Seven of Wands. Wow. Hmm. The Three of Pentacles. You know, this Three of Pentacles has a Jupiter energy to it. Ace of Pentacles. I'm sorry, that's the page. That's the page of Pentacles. Hmm. The Hanged Man. Wow. Hmm. The High Priestess. The Tower card? Holy smokes. <laughs> wow. That's big. What is this? Hmm. And the Justice card. All three major arcana across the bottom. Isn't that something? I always say that, I know, but I can never... Um, explain to you <clears throat> the feeling of what it's like when I read cards because um, every time I lay the cards, whatever the story is, um, I'm always quite surprised by it. Even though I can do subsequent spreads and it may continue to pick up on the same theme or the same story sometimes, but literally, um, the story of what the cards are trying to tell me is always interesting. I have these three kind of weird murky cards here of the Hermit, the Hanged Man, and the Tower card. So we're looking at Virgo. We're looking at Pisces. There's an opposition on the wheel. We're looking at um, Aquarius, right? Um, because it's a Uranus card, but we're also looking at um, Libra here. Um, well, King of Pentacles has presented himself. <clears throat> Whatever this thing is, um, the first thing I'm going to say is that it's <clears throat> not necessarily that it's going to turn out incorrect or wrong or an unmitigated disaster. But what I am picking up is that there, it's not going to go as you planned or the way that you wanted it to. I think there are going to be some surprises. Um, I can't say both good and bad, just surprises. I'm getting that neutral feeling of surprises. Um, but Nevertheless, the justice card, now this could be a legal issue for sure. 
But the justice court speaks to the idea that no matter what the outcome is, right, uh, it's going to be fair. Now, even if we don't like the outcome, even if we think we've been treated really unjustly or unfairly, um, this is about weighing up um, both sides and coming to an objective um, endpoint or an objective uh, view of the situation. Weighing up both sides, it's about reason, it's about discernment. Um, this can also be a karmic situation in which this card, the justice card, is coming to kind of finalize the end of the situation. Now, uh, there's a two here. I have no repeater numbers. And honestly, I only have two pip cards here. The Three of Pentacles and the Seven of Wands. I have, I, well, the, the, the pay, mm, the pay, I have one, two, at least three people, okay, at, at the very least. Um, this King of Pentacles is either our advice card, okay, what we, how we should perhaps view the situation, um, but it could also be the situation, okay? Um, again, my role as a reader is not to tell you what you should do or give you the advice. My role is to try to bring the information to, to maybe make you aware or to help you see more possibilities or to provide a bit of clarity. Okay. You guys know um, that for me, the knights, knights do bring messages. Okay. But, but for me, it's always an event. This is some news that comes through. Okay. That helps to move a situation along. So if something has been stagnant, it's, it's been moved along. Um, but there's something about this night that kind of doesn't sit right with me. And I'm not exactly sure. Let me, let me take a look here. There's something that's, it's trying to jog my memory here. I already told you that, that something's been moved along. Because this reads like a person. Hmm. He's definitely reading as a negative energy. And it's reading as a person. Either this person is the cause of this event or this person is very central. This is how it starts with this person who brings this message, who either starts something or makes something move along. Um, and these two cards together, the hanged man and the high priestess, Because it's like right now, everything is upside down. It's muddled. Um, this could mean that we are, in effect, swimming in a sea of emotions. Um, that we are not seeing things uh, 
clearly as we should, we have a um, the word unrealistic is not what they are <clears throat> telling me. It is there's there's another word and and I can't come up with it yet, but it has to do with realizations and or expectations. Okay. I sense that there is some kind of element of risk involved here. But the idea is that the, whatever the risk is that you're taking or whatever the risk is uh, about, there's something about it that you have not seen yet, or at least you are not seeing clearly. I just get the sense that something is under wraps. Well, where's my, where's my, where's my, I'm going to read these and then we're going to pull, um, it is time to put your analytical skills to good use and to express yourself. Even if you are under pressure, if you need to clear the air, Practice in front of a mirror. Now, I don't know what that means. The key words are bravery, skill, cleverness, quick thinking, and wit. But for some reason, you are either alone, you're searching for the answer, perhaps somebody things moved too fast and now you're seeking refuge. Okay, I, 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 I am not quite clear now is a good time to venture out alone or lose yourself in a crowd but do not fear solitude as you do your best thinking in silence the key words are insight introspection meditation philosophy prudence and deliberation This is an interesting card. Let me tell you why it's interesting. You are in a position of safety and strength. Invaders may storm the fortress, but they cannot breach the sanctuary. You can withstand almost any attack, spiritual, emotional, intellectual or physical the key words are courage advantage positioning positioning i'm sorry and success and what i find it's like whatever this message is that moved this thing along all of a sudden there's been a retreat okay there's a retreat and typically sevens are a moment when you are questioning yourself. So this card is about wisdom and, and self-knowledge. Okay. But it's almost as if the card is saying, you know, you had to move, you had to make a decision or you had to move. Something came up quite suddenly. I don't know if you had to go someplace or if this is on, on a mental plane that you, had to beat a retreat quite hastily. And right now, everything is okay, right? This is giving you this moment of pause where you can can um, think about things, question whatever it is that, that you, you know, what your plans are, what you've been told, or, or what you think is happening. But there's just something about these two cards together that just kind of don't sit right with me. All right, I hear my dog out there barking, but I'm not paying him any attention. The three of pentacles. Compare notes and pay attention to these detail. In the process of coordinating your creative efforts with others, you can give structure and form to your dreams. 
The keywords are skill, creativity, talent, ability, and recognition. But the reason why I said that this has something to do with the Jupiter transit, let me see if I can find the card. The Wheel of Fortune. And we know, there it is. <coughs> Excuse me. See those horses? It's the same two horses. Only this card, this card here shows us what's ahead and this one shows us what's behind. But there are the two cards. I mean the two horses. Page of Pentacles. Whatever this message is, I think there is um, either something you're going to be required to do This is a reminder of the freedom you felt when you were in a park or a playground. Recapture those moments any way that you can. The key words are health, fitness, stability, and sure-footedness. To me, it is sure-footedness. Don't got nothing to do with playing. Although this could be like saying, you know, you need to take a rest, you need to process whatever's been happening. But to me, this is about being sure-footed about something before you take your next step. Because some of you may be stepping off into an abyss of the unknown. Now, that's not always a bad thing because uh, like the glyph of Pisces um, intimates, it's two fish swimming uh, in different directions, right? Sometimes we have to submerge ourselves. We have to swim back and forth um, to kind of um, immerse ourselves in a situation. But I don't know, Dory just came to mind, just keep swimming. I don't know why that came across, but there it is. <laughs> the thing is to just keep swimming, right? Okay, so here we have the um, the hanged man. He invites you to join him into his watery realm, but do not plunge in head first. Wade in slowly. Test its depths. Once you are comfortably immersed, feel free to dive as deeply as you wish. However, be sure to come up for air. The keywords are reflection, meditation, initiation, solitude, silence, and rebirth. Remember, it's like going into the womb, right? We're surrounded by water for nine months, but yet while we're there, we can hear, we, we respond to stimuli from the outside. It's, it, it's This is why I think that this card is speaking to me of sure-footedness because it's asking you not to jump in head first. It's asking you to wade in slowly and test. So you got at your feet. You want to be sure-footed about what you're doing. Here is the, um, since the, the cycles of life that you are, are experiencing are natural and completely predictable. If you need confirmation of that fact, ask an older woman for advice. But the keywords speak to mysteries, secrets, wisdom, intuition, and second sight. I don't know if sitting here in front of this tower card, if this means... Because there's two things. She's she's watching this. But at the same time, it's like the lid's being blown off. Okay, the tower card. Like a bolt from the blue, the tower illustrates the collapse of a structure you thought was safe. Like a relationship, a home, or a career. It might be a rude awakening, but it is also a call to consciousness and a chance to start over. The key word is shock, crisis, calamity, monumental change, and a sudden drastic transformation. And what doesn't make any sense to me 
is this row. Seeking solid so, uh, refuge and sanctuary. It's like you step out. You're being asked to be sure-footed. This. this could also be about carelessness. Remember it said, you know, like you were, find a playground, play. This could be the carelessness of it all that ends up causing this particular tower. Let's look at the Justice card. As the Justice card, it says, you might find that you are not completely in the right. This card makes clear that you'll be held fully responsible for your role in any misunderstandings, miscommunications, and mistakes. But it can also be literal, as it can signify legal paperwork, lawsuits, and court hearings. The key words are fairness, impartiality, honesty, negotiations, agreements, and settlements. But I, I don't, these two cards don't make sense. Because this says that you're safe, you can withstand any attack. But here's this. Okay, let's look at this King of Pentacles here, just so we can kind of get the idea. It represents a source of financial support and advice. It says that this person is in a position to help you with your career or to make sound investments of your time. The key words are wealth, business, security, and success. Well, you know, there's a lot happening in this spread. A lot happening. And because the card that is giving me the most confusion is this page of pentacles. Now, I will tell you this much. Pages will typically represent children or young or young young people. But sometimes they will simply show up when someone is being immature and reckless, okay? With whatever they're doing or whatever they're banking on or <laughs> However, they're investing their time, their energy, their money. So that could be what this card is really telling me. So I'm going to pull the Malanconia, the reverse five of diamonds. The Bambino, either children or a new start or a new beginning. And the Domestico. Now, just in a general sense, this is about help being offered, right? That's what he does. Because there's a whole bunch of shadowy stuff going on here. <laughs> you know, from the messages to the, I don't know, running away or hiding or, 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 I, I, there's a bunch of shadowy stuff happening here. <clears throat> the falsita. The lamica reversed. And the messageri. This is definitely some kind of document or letter, some kind of news. Um, this will be coming from somebody who was once a friend. And um, 
the thing about this person though is that it's really not something personal um it, it just is i think a reversal and and there's not going to be any clarity on why this is let's look at this <clears throat> Typically, this person just gives you can is is can be a friend, right? Uh, somebody who gives good advice and um, um, support uh, typically can help you in a financial sense, right? The reverse of this is still the same thing, but it just kind of means that the person will kind of be rather standoffish. Sometimes it's the idea that you may be introduced to somebody through friends. Let's. Uh, then we're going to wrap this reading up. I want to see what this tower card is all about. Oh shit, it's a tower on top of a tower. The letterato. Hmm. And the amelato. Let me go see what my dog's doing. I'll be right back. I hate to break it up like that, but I'll be right back, okay? Hang on. Promise. Okay, sorry for such an interruption at a pivotal time. Um, <clears throat> basically, I get the sense that this is typically represents a young man. It may be somebody that you know already, but here with the presence of the Bambino, it tells me that this is a future event. This is the return or the arrival of somebody, somebody that perhaps you have already cried a lot of tears over. You have already um, suffered at the hands, quote unquote, of this individual. Let me um, tell you what the, the Malanconia, and it is a diamonds card, okay? So this is something you've already done, it falls on a diamonds. It's something you've already done, you've already been through. Um, it indicates uh, someone coming back from the past that will come out of the woodwork, but usually with alluring motives or false motives. And this card is telling you don't trust somebody from the past that's coming back. Okay. Um, Financially, if this is a financial issue, it's gonna it talks about debts and lawsuits. Okay. But here with this card, there's a lot of confusion surrounding the situation. And believe it or not, this card represents it's positive when it is reversed. In effect, as is this card. And what that tells me is that. Right now, there's a lot of confusion, and you may get some news or information, some kind of letter from somebody that you don't even know out of the blue, whether this is a text mes message, an email, a phone call, an actual letter in the mail that's going to come. But this person is sending you some information that you need. Okay? You're going to need this information to the wise woman to balance this situation out or at least to be on equal footing. Yeah. It is these three cards on the tower. This is the tragedy card. And unlike this card or in the regular deck, these are not people falling out of a tower. This is about people being burnt alive inside the building. They can't get out. So sometimes this card represents the idea of um, a situation that you created yourself, maybe from not learning your lesson the first time. I do get the sense that this is somebody that, in effect, has put in the work in terms of understanding how they're going to come at you. Okay, um, let me let me read to you the. The um, I mean, 
mean, just look at the card. It's like he's waiting on something to happen or someone to come in. And he is prepared. He's studied up on it. Okay. Um, sometimes this card can, can speak about good relationships or reconciliation and the help of a trusted man. But here with the four of spades, let me check my notes here. Hold on one second. It is the reverse. It says that something is going to be interrupted for better or for worse. Okay. It says this is going to be due to other causes. It indicates stagnation and no new developments this is about you wanting to be left alone to take some time out for yourself a voluntary withdrawal it can indicate someone is holding back and not showing their true emotions it also indicates a pause in the relationship coldness or distance a disinterest So I'm not exactly sure if this is telling me that this is an old um, <clears throat> legal issue that's going to resurface. And it's definitely telling me that there's going to be somebody here. Let me read to you the, the Messagere card. This is the Jack of Diamonds. Okay. <clears throat> It can represent a letter or a package that has to be signed for, a hand-delivered letter, and a communication. It can describe a go-between, a negotiator, a, rep a representative. It can even just simply be the postman. It is the action of sending or receiving something or the arrival of someone. It could also just be like whatever this message is that comes, it's almost going to be as if the angels are sending you this news. Now, do I think that maybe you can in some way or shape avert this? Perhaps. Um, but I think the question is, uh, the the statement is to... Um, <clears throat> First of all, be prepared. Um, know that whatever the battle or the, okay, you can most definitely um, either protect yourself or um, what's the phrase that I'm looking for? You can batten down the hatches and be prepared. Normally that seven of wands is somebody standing up on a hill, right? Beating back other things. I don't know if this is the idea that you are about to join forces with someone, sign some kind of business deal or legal contract, or if this is literally the idea that you thought a situation, a legal issue had gone away, but now it's going to come back. Um, this It tells me that you've already been through this, okay? But that most definitely there's going to be a return of this situation. It could have to do with this particular person, all right? Um, I want to pull cards. Um, I'm going to look at this King of Pentacles here. I feel that this card is telling me that when this person appears, you're gonna you're gonna feel something's kind of hinky or know something is up. Pay attention to it. 
it's almost as if the person is waiting for you to slip up. I don't know if that means anything. There's the Six of Diamonds. The Queen of Spades. And the Five of Hearts. Reconciliation. Return of a lost love or rift is mended. A possible gift of money. It says you have to open up in order to receive the gifts offered to you. But if this is negative, it can indicate relationship problems, arguments, and sometimes be a forewarning of a separation. When this queen of spades comes in, she's known first and foremost as the divorcee card. A single woman or widowed woman. Um... But she can also um, be somebody who is come in between, between you, between two people. She represents somebody who's dark haired uh, with air predominating her chart. If this is not you, the woman is seductive and unscrupulous and fond of scandals and open to bribes. But if this is you, this card is telling you that you yourself need to make good decisions, act independently to avoid treachery, betrayal, and malice. With this five of hearts, it says at the moment all movement has stopped. You're in a rut and depression has set in. You're unable to make a decision because you are confused. And you are being hit with jealousy and ill will from people all around you. Remember I said, it just reads like <clears throat> a situation that suddenly, either with the return of somebody or news of somebody coming back or news of um, some kind of news, this situation, it, it happened rapidly and quickly. And you, you know, you're trying to duck out of the way, but you can't avoid it. Whatever this thing is, you're going to have to go through it. Okay, that's just the truth of the matter. Um, I want, want to pull. Um, you're going to have to deal with it. <laughs> you can't hide away from it. You, right now you're in a good position, but you're, you're going to have to at some point come out and deal with this situation. One angel answer card. Now, I don't know if this is an enemy that you've been dealing with, somebody you can't get rid of. I don't know. Okay. Big positive changes are coming into your life. You may find yourself on a new career path, entering a new relationship, or moving to a new home or city. Embrace these exciting changes, knowing that your angels will be beside you all the way. What you are asking about may require you to take leaps of faith that seem frightening or beyond your ability. And I think that's what's coming across. Trust that the opportunities before you are meant to bring you happiness. These options would not have presented themselves unless you were ready for them. Release your fears and follow your heart. And I think that's what the cards are telling me is you're going to have to face this. You're going to have to go through this. But no matter what this thing is, uh, the time has come now um, for you to move forward so that whatever happiness that you're seeking in your life can start to manifest itself. You're not going to be able to avoid whatever this is. That's the honest to God's truth. You're going to have to deal with it at some point. Well, you know, you don't have to. Uh, you can choose to let things stay exactly the way they are, but if that's the case, it's a situation of your own choosing. Make sense? Okay, so that's what I have for you. I hope this message helped, and until next time, namaste.